morning, thank you, good afternoon, I guess. President Williams, thank you for hosting uh, this great event. I think everybody here will find it fitting that uh, this rally discussion today is being held in the House of Labor. I think we can all agree that over the last century, nothing important in terms of social or economic policies happened without uh, organized labor and trade unionists fighting for it. So I can assure you, thank you. Lady, on behalf of the 700,000 members of the Ohio AFL-CIO, we are not going to put our heads down. Our heads are going to be held high. And as Brian said, it's important today that we're here because we're maybe four, five, six weeks out for getting something done. But I'm fed up with rallies, to be quite honest. This probably has something to do with my hard-boiled upbringing in Marion, Ohio, being around <coughs> steel workers and machinists and auto workers and railroaders. But I'm ready to fight. Yeah. Yeah. We've said just about all we can say. We've talked about all we can talk. And Norm, I love your sign. Can you hold your sign up, please? Because this is what public health care can mean. Everybody's okay with Medicare, aren't we? Yeah. Reading today in the dispatch, a op-ed about uh, corporate socialism, and let's be honest, that's what we're living under today, corporate socialism, yeah, yeah, yeah. whereby we're taking our money and we're giving it to the profits of the multinationals, yeah. rather than taking taxpayer money, using it in a smart way. Norm, how many Republicans voted for Medicare? Zero. Zero. How many Republicans voted for Social Security? Zero. Okay, so now, and we're going to get to it in a little bit, and uh, we've got a lot of policymakers here today that are with us on this fight. Uh, Representative Harris is right on these articles. If you remember when the Clintons were trying to change health care, the private insurers at least had the decency to put their head in the sand for a while and not raise rates, not kick people off of insurance rolls. There's no shame in the private insurance community. Is there, Marianne? There's no shame. So they're, they're not even uh, quiet about it. The Health and Human Services report this week that private insurance rates are going to continue to skyrocket. People are going to be thrown off for pre-existing conditions. We know this is happening. We know that over the last decade, health care costs have risen four times faster than wages. We know now that we've got to see this through to the finish line. Let's be clear about what the Massachusetts Senate race results were all about. Jennifer, we did polling that night, 800 exit polls of people that voted in Massachusetts. And they didn't say it was too big of a government takeover. They're frustrated that we're not getting anything done, and we got to get it done. And we also lost organized labor on that race because of the confusion around the excise tax. And our sisters and brothers are paying for health care every time they sit down and negotiate a contract. And as the lieutenant governor said, we can no longer continue to have workers continuing to pay more and more of the cost of the health care burden. We have got to fix that piece. Now, whether we fix that in the bill that's going to be passed or do like, do like Ronald Reagan did, when Republicans get in charge, I don't know if you notice this or not, they get their way. They don't care so much about governance, but they care about getting their way. We've got to realize that, as Becky said earlier, 2008 was the biggest change election in my lifetime. If there was ever a change election, it was that election. We've got a mandate. The Democrats have a mandate. They've got to learn how to use it. And by God, it's our responsibility to make them understand that. Kathy, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I thought you, like I, was born in the Kennedy, during the Kennedy administration. That's a revelation to me, I swear to God. But working with Kathy and Brian's right, this is how you get something done. Labor, community activists, social community uh, uh, leaders, Brother Aaron's, we were there on minimum wage. Kathy, we were there on prescription drugs. Working together, we're going to get this thing done. We've got to show the commitment. And I can assure you that in organized labor 
and the director of Working America, Dan Hex, here, 700,000 Ohioans that belong to Working America that we can talk to in organized labor. There are 700,000 members. The Ohio AFL-CIO, 700,000 members. All the trade unionists in the state of Ohio are going to continue to make the calls. We've made tens of thousands of calls. We'll make tens of thousands more. We take buses to Washington. We'll take more buses. We'll write more letters. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to our congressional delegation, and we ought to be thankful that we've got Mary Jo Kilroy yeah. representing us here. And after her, thank you very much. Pass it along to Mary Jo. She's not afraid. He said, let's go to budget reconciliation and get something done for the people. Yeah. Mary Jo gets it. So on that, I think we're going to close today, if I'm not mistaken, Becky, with hearing from Ohio's champion in the Senate, yeah. somebody that all of the congressional delegation in Ohio looks to, our North Star in Congress, our champion on health care, Sherry Brown.